Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about function objects. So in a previous video, we looked at the basics of how we can overload the operators inside of our structs in our classes. Now, one of the operators that we can overload is this function call operator. And when we do this, we make a function object. So if we look on the right hand side of the screen here, I have the function object page from CPP reference up. And you can see that it says that a function object is any object for which the function call operator is defined. So we can basically call our objects like we can call our functions. Now, one of the nice things about this is it gives us these functions with some state associated with it. And this state is going to be all of those uh, data members associated with our object. And now we can call them like functions. So what we're going to be looking at today is kind of the basics on how we can define this operate this call operator, this function call operator that is for our objects to make these function objects and how we can use them in the context of say a standard library algorithm. So something like std um, find if. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll open up a new example here and we'll just call it something like function objects dot cpp. And we can start off by just including IO stream so we can do some printing. And of course, we're going to need a main function. So let's go ahead and define, say, some struct that we have the ability to call. So let's say we want you to define, say, some object, right, to check if some number is divisible by another. So we'll create some struct and we'll call it, say, is divisible, right? Then inside of here, we can add, say, a data member here, which will be our divisor. So we want to check to see if um, some number divided by our divisor um, has a zero remainder. So it's evenly divisible by you know, some divisor. So we'll have some integer uh, divisor here. And then we can go ahead and initialize that with a constructor here. So we'll write our constructor for is divisible. And this constructor will say, take um, say a single integer, right? The divisor that we want to set. So we'll take say some new divisor and then we'll use our uh, member initializer list to go ahead and uh, uh, initialize divisor here with new divisor. And we'll go ahead and just have an empty um, uh, constructor body here. Now, the final thing that we're gonna implement for this uh, simple struct up here is our operator, this function call operator. So what we wanna do whenever we call say objects of this type is divisible, is we wanna check to see if whatever number we pass in, um, our dividend is evenly divisible by our divisor here. So what it should return is say just a bool, right? A true false of whether or not the number is divisible by our divisor. So we'll return a bool, then what we're impl implementing is this function call operator. So this operator open and closed parens here. Then like all of our other member functions, we can have a list of parameters. In this case, the only thing we need to pass in is our dividend, right? The number we wanna check to see is if it's evenly divisible by our divisor. So we'll just pass in some integer dividend, and then we can have our function call body, or rather our, uh, our, our member function body here. So inside of here, all we need to check is, you know, we're gonna return if our dividend modulo our divisor is equal to zero. So we use this modulo operator to do integer division, but to get the remainder from integer division. So we're checking to see if that if we divide these two numbers, if we divide dividend by divisor, we check to see if the remainder is equal to zero here. That's all we're doing. We're checking to see if this uh, dividend is evenly divisible by our divisor. All right, so that's our implementation for our struct up here with this call operator. So when we create an instance of this is divisible struct, we can call that object. It's a function object. So let's go ahead and try that out. So down here, we'll create an object of type is divisible. And let's give it a name, like something like is divisible by 10. So say we want to use this object to see if numbers are evenly divisible by 10. So we'll initialize it with uh, our constructor here with our new divisor equal to 10. Okay, then let's see how we can call this object, right? Like we can our functions. So let's just do something like std c out, and then we'll just print out is divisible by 10, right? And we'll check to see if some number like 55 is evenly divisible by 10. And let's print a new line character afterwards. So what we should see here is a printout of zero, right? 55 is not evenly divisible by 10. There's a remainder five here. So let's see if we go ahead and get the right result here when we compile this. 
So we can go ahead and compile function objects.cpp with G++ and call our output executable just something like function objects. Okay, we have our executable here. Let's go ahead and run it. And what we see is we get zero here. So the Boolean false here, right? 55 was not evenly divisible by 10. Likewise, if we change it to something like 50, we should see true for this, right? 50 is evenly divisible by 10. So we can recompile and try that out and run it. And we see a value of one here, right? So true, it was evenly divisible by 10, right? But we have the ability here, we're calling an object like we would a function because it implements this function call operator. Okay. So that's a simple example of, you know, writing and using these uh, function objects, but let's see how we can use them in the context of something like one of our STL algorithms. So say one of our constrained algorithms, like std ranges find if. Now, if we go ahead and look to see what this algorithm does, it returns the first element in some range, right, first to last, that satisfies some specific criteria here, right? And we can specify what that criteria is using something like a um, function object, like this is divisible object that we've created here. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that through say a range of integers inside of a vector. So let's go ahead and include a couple more headers here. So we'll go ahead and include um, say vector and we'll also include algorithm, right? So we can get access to this, uh, uh, this constrained algorithm, the student ranges find if. So let's say we want to go ahead and create a vector of integers, so some std vector of integers. We'll just call it something like my vector. And then we'll set it equal to say, you know, a couple values here. So 41, 20, then maybe 84, then 94, and then let's go ahead and say, you know, 23, something like that. And what we wanna do is find the first element that is evenly divisible by 10 here. So we could write that entire implementation ourselves through something like a for loop, or we could just use our std ranges find if here. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So it says that it returns the first element in this range that satisfies our criteria here. And what it really does is it uh, returns an iterator to that element. So we can say, you know, auto iterators, we can use automatic type deduction for this, is equal to std ranges find if, and we can pass in a range of values, which is our my vector. And then we can pass in our predicate here, right? And we can, for a predicate, we can use our is divisible by 10 function object down here, right? It's something that will tell our algorithm whether or not, um, you know, the element in our vector, um, you know, matches what, you know, what we're looking for here. We're finding if some condition is true, right? And to get that, you know, true or false here, we're using our function object. This is divisible by 10. So let's go ahead and pass that in as our predicate. So this is divisible by 10 here. And then we can go ahead and just print out whatever was at this iterator, right? Now, in this case, what's going to be at this iterator? Well, we should see a value of 20 here, um, right? 20 is the first element that is divisible by 10. So we should see that as a uh, printout here. Um, now, what you should probably do here uh, you know, for doing this in a more general case, is you should check to make sure this iterator isn't equal to my vector dot end. So it's not, um, you know, all the way past the end of your vector. Okay, but let's go ahead and print this out. We should see 20. So we'll just dereference our iterator here to get that value. And we'll print a new line character afterwards. Okay, so we go ahead and save this. Let's go ahead and recompile this function objects.cpp. And you can see that we get an error here. So again, because we're using these constrained algorithms, these are something that are part of C++ 20. So you'll need a relatively modern compiler. In general, you'll need to specify, you know, that the standard is equal to C++ 20. Okay, so that gets us past our compiler error. Let's go ahead and run this. This function objects executable, and you see we get the value of 20 here, right? So we were able to use our constrained algorithm here and our function object here to search our vector um, based on some condition. And our condition was um, using this function object that we defined, right? This is divisible struct. Okay, so that's gonna be the basics of function objects and that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. One thing that we'll be looking at say in the next video is this idea of anonymous function objects with lambdas and how they really simplify these simple conditions and get rid of a lot of this boilerplate code that we need to write. But again, that'll be in the next video. As always, you can find any of these examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. So right under this CPP from scratch um, repository here on this page.
But like I said, that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.